nothing beats a day at the beach. I know what you're thinking, this doesn't look like a beach, but if we could travel back many millions of years ago, that's exactly where we would find ourselves, standing on the shoreline of the ancient Cretaceous Seaway. In fact, that sandstone that you see behind me would have been deposited right on the beach of that Cretaceous Seaway, and along with it would have been deposits of coal and mudstone and limestone, all representing the advancement and the retreat of the seaway again and again. This sequence of sedimentary rocks is referred to by geologists as regression transgression sequences, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Okay, so now let's just try to imagine that coastal Cretaceous environment. In fact, the easiest way is just imagine a coastal environment today. If we go way inland and we're in the uplands and the mountains, from there we can follow the drainage patterns. And as long as it's not a closed system, this material, this sediment from the mountains will drain all the way to the sea. This transport of sediments will occur across what is referred to as a fluvial environment. And then as we proceed closer to the coastline, we'll have the actual beach, the shoreline, where the sand is deposited. And as we move out then into the sea, we'll eventually move past the sandy environment, which we think of as a high energy environment where the sands are deposited. And we move out into a bit quieter environment as we progress into the sea. And this is where our finer sediments will start to be deposited. So we will get mudstones. And then we continue our movement out into the sea and we enter the area where the carbonates are deposited. And this is where we get limestones. This is the sequence that we want to think about when we're trying to understand how we get these transgression regression cycles and how we get them recorded in the rock layers. So to better understand transgressive regressive sequences, we want to first take a look at a model of what transgression looks like. Then we'll look at regression. And we're going to look at these from the perspective of a typical model and then we'll talk about how things might be a little different in the real world. So first let's start with transgression, often associated with sea level rise or when the sea is moving inland. So now try to imagine that coastline and that depositional sequence of the limestones out at sea, the mudstones and shales, and the sandstones more inland. Imagine those get deposited, but then over time the shoreline changes. Move your shoreline inland a bit and you'll see that sequence get deposited once more on top of the old deposits. That means that the limestone, mudstone, sandstone sequence now sort of overlaps the existing sequence, but more inland. And then imagine the shoreline moves again inland. What happens? Well, again, our limestone, shale, sandstone sequence overlaps that layer or that series of deposits. And what's happening through this transgressive sequence is that essentially the limestone layer keeps overlapping more and more of those existing layers. And we refer to this as a retrogradational pattern or a retrogradational stacking. And what we see in the rock layer as a result is a transgressive facie sequence. So what we'll see is a fining upward or basically sandstone, mudstone, limestone. Now let's reverse the thought process and think about a regression. It is essentially the opposite of the transgression. The sea is now moving outward away from the continental environment and as a result we see that that pattern, the sandstone, mudstone, limestone pattern will also be moving out and those deposits will be on top of the other existing units. So we'll see sandstones depositing more out towards the sea or as the shoreline is shifting out towards the sea. We refer to this as progradational stacking and what we see in the rock record is a regressive facie sequence or in this case a coarsening upward. So flip the transgressive sequence and think about this as going from limestone, mudstone, sandstone. Also don't forget that as the seashore shifts outward those previously deposited layers are now exposed and therefore subject to possible erosion. Which brings me to our next thought and that is 
how does this actually play out in the real world when we're looking at the rock record? Because oftentimes the geologic record doesn't look so perfect, right? So what would cause some differences in this smooth gradation from these sequences that we just talked about. One thing to think about is the speed at which the material is deposited and at which the sea level rises. The, the sea level rise and the deposition associated with it will make a big difference in what types of rocks that we actually get preserved. I already mentioned that erosion could play a role here. With that, we would be left with an unconformity in those instances. A great example of these transgression regression sequences is found in the Mesa Verde group. This is a group because it actually contains a lot of different formations. The Mesa Verde group is named after the type section, which can be found in southwest Colorado. There you will find a nice and neat package of three rock units that represent one regression transgression cycle. However, if you move around and look for the Mesa Verde group elsewhere, which you can find all the way from New Mexico into Utah and Wyoming, at those other localities, you'd probably find that they don't exactly line up perfectly with the type section. Sometimes they have more or less of one rock unit type. Sometimes they record more regression transgression sequences. In fact, many of them were even deposited at different ages. However, they all still record the same type of event, and that is the regression transgression sequence. They just might look a little different. And that's the point. These can vary from that perfect sequence that we originally talked about. And there's other things that can be involved, like stream channels that represent the inland environment could house sand and sandstones. And inland environments also house coal seams now, interfingered throughout the Mesa Verde deposit. Like these rocks back behind me, that's the Mesa Verde group. And this is a great example of that regression transgression sequence. Now, if you look at those rocks, you can see that yellowish colored cliff forming sandstone interrupted then by those gray softer shales. Those are the sequences of the continental beach near shore sandstones grading into those soft silty shales. But it's named after the type section found in Southwest Colorado. If you're at that type section in the San Juan Basin at Mesa Verde National Park, you'll find the Point Lookout Sandstone with the Menifee Formation and the Cliff House Sandstone. That package represents one regression cycle. There are a lot of reasons why the shoreline might change. One of them that we're observing today is referred to as eustatic change. And that is the result of glaciers and ice caps melting, causing global sea level to rise. But we can also see more localized changes that might result from regional topographical differences or geologic events. Some of those examples are isostatic rebounds and tectonic activity, such as around the Cretaceous time that we were talking about with the Mesa Verde group, we have the severe orogenic event that is occurring. Perhaps you've already caught on to the fact that the Mesa Verde group is a good source of natural resources. I mentioned coal, but it's also something else. As you can see, if you walk around the area, you find a lot of signs like this warning of natural gas pipelines. And the USGS has done some studies recently showing that the Mesa Verde group is a large source of potential untapped natural gas resources. So there you have it, regression transgression sequences. I hope you learned a lot today, and if you love geology as much as I do, check out some of the other videos I have here. I have plenty of playlists with different topics from rocks and minerals to special topics, climate, geologic time, and you can even go on virtual field trips with me where we can dive a lot deeper into these topics and see things actually in the field. That's all for today. I'll see you guys next time on Let's Go Geo.